Hey everyone, Gabriel Rivera. Our last video we talked about uh, all the exercise components and variables that go into exercise programming. This video will be on uh, eating or nutrition and how we can uh, set up a program for that. So when it comes to eating and, and all this nonsense that's out there, it can be really confusing with uh, all the diets and the fasting and um, you know, the cleansing stuff that's out there. Um, certainly don't want to make this complicated, and we're going to be looking at this more as a uh, behavioral as aspect rather than this scientific um, approach when it comes to uh, calorie content or your macronutrient percentages and as far as protein, carbs, or fat, uh, or even... Uh, you know, your micronutrients when it comes to your water content or your vitamins and minerals. Um, but just like any type of program, it's going to start with what your goal is. So looking at um, uh, eating, right, what your goals are in terms of whether you're trying to gain weight, lose weight, or maintain it, uh, because it's going to be important to the amount of food that you're going to be having. Uh, but everything is going to kind of boil down or start with what we need in, in our food. Um, so for the most part, we're looking at protein. We do need some protein. Um, we do need fat. As much as everybody is um, scared of it or there's a lot of controversy, we need fat. It's really good. Uh, and we need carbs. These are the big three things that we need. Uh, protein is going to be important. And you know, we're just going to make this really simple simply because that, that's going to help us with uh, muscle repair. Right? The reason why fat is so important uh, is because one of the big things that it does is it helps with uh, hormone regulation. And then carbs are important, and we're just going to say that's because they're energy. Right, so those are the, the three big things when it comes to what we're looking at in our food content. But then we also want to make sure that we have uh, water. Water is important. And then, of course, we're looking at uh, vitamins and our minerals. And this will usually be in the form of like maybe fruits. Um, vegetables, we'll say veggies, uh, or maybe even some form of like supplement or something. So when we're looking at the food that we're having, we're looking at for, for something of like this, making sure there's some sort of balance between all of this. Any type of program, we have to collect some sort of data. So this is where some type of food log will be um, Required where we're going to say, okay, we're going to write down the, um, uh, all the food that we're having for maybe um, two or uh, maybe three days to a week, right? And we want to be as specific as possible. And this is going to be in terms of um, time, right? When we're having um, our food, right, the time of day that we're having our food uh, portion, right, portion, uh, you know, one, uh, there's a lot of um, ways that you can kind of measure your food and we don't want to make this complicated. Uh, one way that we can look at it is maybe using our hands. Um, we can say that uh, palm size is like uh, for our meat, our protein, right, maybe it's a chicken, uh, we can use like the thumb, our thumb width here for um, our fat content. We can use a scoop uh, or like a little palm size or scoop full of uh, either carb or vegetable or something like that. And that's going to be something that we're, is going to be in each meal that we're looking for. Um, so that's going to be, we want to be as specific as possible when it comes to documenting our, our, our content, our food content, and maybe even how we're feeling at that time, whether um, it was a stressful day or um, whether we were bored or anything like that. After that, after we write down our food and we look at it, we want to figure out why. 
So if we look at it and we just said, okay, for lunch, um, I, had, I had chicken, I had rice and beans, right? So we're gonna look at what we need and we're gonna say, okay, well, I had my protein and I had a lot of carbs, but um, I had no fat, um, I had no water, and I had no fruits and vegetables, right? So why was that, right? Whether we may not have been aware of that. Uh, we didn't know that, um, that we weren't having all the other stuff. So sometimes a food log can just increase your awareness. Um, knowledge. Maybe, um, you know, we're scared to have fat, so we just want to have protein and carbs. Um, so that's something that we have to just increase our knowledge or, or, um, on, on what fat can do for you and how it can help us. Uh, or maybe it was just emotional. That uh, you had, you know, your rice and beans for that because it makes you feel better. Uh, it reminds you of, you know, when you had it with your family or something like that because you had a really stressful day that day. Um, so being aware of why we're having these foods is going to be... Um, important to overcoming it in the next, in the next steps. Um, once we figure out all this out, then we have to say, okay, I have to start making adjustments, but we want to make sure they're small adjustments because we can't take all this, whether it was, I'm not having enough fat in my meals, I'm not having any water and I have no fruits and vegetables in any of my meals. We can't take all that at once. Um, so we're going to pick something, whether it is, okay, I need to increase my water intake. Um, so I'll, chew that, I'll do that for maybe uh, two weeks. <clears throat> After the two weeks, then I'll, um, I'll record. I'll make another food log and see how I did. Then after that, I'll do another challenge. Maybe now I'll start to tackle my fat uh, deficiency. And now I'm going to start having uh, more fats in my meals and maybe reducing the, the carb content because I'm just having you know, too many carbs in my meals. Um, but it's important that we do it that way because this way we're gonna start um, learning how to eat better, we're gonna start teaching our body how to eat better and start kind of um, re-educating ourselves in this process of eating. Um, so this is a big way that we can look at um, tackling our, our eating behaviors in terms of nutrition without getting into the whole percentage aspect or the whole counting when it comes to calorie counting or, um, or anything like that. So I hope this helps you. So of course this is a general approach when it comes to um, an eating program. A lot of it is uh, relative based off of um, any type of issues that you may have, whether it is you know, celiac disease or if you're diabetic or any other medical issues. But it's important that one, we still remember that it is uh, based off of our goal, what we're trying to accomplish. And two, it's still important for us to get some form of assessment. And this is usually gonna be accomplished through the questions that the professional is asking you or, um, uh, or and or the, the first initial uh, food log, right? Getting that information and determining where we currently stand. So I wanna hear from you. Because collecting data is so important when it comes to our eating and, and changing our eating behaviors, um, how are you gonna be more specific with your uh, food log? Are you going to write a uh, carry a journal with you? Or are you gonna use an application? Um, let us know, leave a comment on, on below. So that's everything about eating and eating behaviors. Our next video will be on recovery.